Hey, good morning and welcome to Breakthrough Walls. I'm Ken Walls and I'm your host. And ladies and gentlemen, I have a really cool dude on today. I just met him through my brother, Glenn Morshower. His name is Kevin Blake Weldon. And um, he's a country music star and a lot of other cool stuff. I just, I can't wait for y'all to meet Kevin and I want to call him Blake, which I think he'd be okay with. But anyway, just, just, you know what? Hang tight. Do me a favor. And underneath this video, click that share button and share this out to everybody. You know, you're going to want to hear this. This guy was mentored directly by the late great Bob Proctor. The entire Bob Proctor community knows him and you're going to find out why. So just share this out. Let's get a thousand people on here watching. It's going to change your perspective on life. Kevin Blake Weldon is coming on. Stay with us. And we're back. Let me bring Kevin on. Kevin, welcome to the show, man. And brother, I've been looking forward to this since 30 minutes ago, man. I appreciate that last minute invite to your show, bro. It's going to be awesome. 30 minutes ago. <laughs> I know. Like, I've been bouncing around like a chicken with my head chopped off, man, but I, I'm here. I had Blake Shelton scheduled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> but he, he had to cancel, so I'm kidding. I'm no, so man, this you, is I'm great. I'm so glad you thought of me to fill in for Blake Shelton, bro. That's right? I'm, I'll, I'll, be mean, the, I'll be the fill in the Blake today. How's that? that <laughs> there you go. Oh, this is going to be great. So so listen, man, um, we just met. I came out to, to see you perform with Glenn. Him and I came out to Longview, Texas to see you and um, and Josh perform. I always forget Josh's name. I wonder what that's all about. Well, you won't forget his voice. I can tell you that right now. I know, man. That guy is so talented. But so are you. And 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 um, you know, I found a we we started talking. You were on stage. I was in the audience, and we started having a conversation. You remember that? I do. <laughs> Josh is like, I've never seen that happen before. That was crazy. Um, but we found out that we have a lot of things in common, a lot of mutual friends. And so I said, man, I got to get you on the show. So thank you for being here. Well, Ken, it, it's an honor to be here. I'm, I'm really excited about this. I, I've done I've done a few of these over the course of the past 30 years, but I've been really excited. About, I've been watching some of your stuff. And like you said, we have a few mutual friends and they speak very highly of you. So I'm, I'm excited, bro. Glad to be here. And you can call yeah. me Ray. You can call me Ray. You can call me Jay. Just don't call me Johnson. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know if you remember that old commercial, but so, so, so listen, man, um, you know, this is really all about helping people get unstuck in mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And, um, I have a, a, a suspicion that you've probably been stuck at some point in life. And, and, and so I, I, that's what I want to talk about. Let's, let's start with, um, <laughs> look, my buddy Doug Wing says a country boy can survive. So, and and you have the deep southern Canadian accent. Oh yeah, exactly, bro. <laughs> they know exactly where I'm from around here as soon as I open up my mouth. <laughs> hey, dude, so, it's, it's snowing out here, Ken. Oh, it's, 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 it's coming down right now. It's gonna be it's gonna be 75 in Dallas today. Not just here, saying. Bro. So, so listen, man, start with telling everybody, let's start with you telling everybody where you were born and raised. Well, I was born and raised in Lufkin in, in East Texas. So that's, that's, you know, that's where the accent comes from. And a lot of my little nuances, East Texas, I'm talking about Piney Woods, Lufkin, Texas. Lufkin, Texas. And, and so, um, what was it like for you growing up in Lufkin? And it's L U F K I N. That's correct. Right. Okay. 
man, we could literally be here for six months talking about what it was like growing up in Lufkin, Texas. But, you know, for me, it was a normal, it was normal. I mean, that's what we knew. I mean, we, you know, no different than probably most, most people. We had a little neighborhood and we had little friends that we'd go build forts with and play cops and robbers and cowboys and Indians and all those games and build forts and float little boats down the ditch when the floods would come and, yeah, you know, yeah. you'd stay out till it got dark and, and you knew to come home for dinner, but you know, you could just, we, we would literally disappear in the morning about six thirty, seven 7 o'clock. As soon as it got daylight, we may not come home till lunch and then dinner. And Hey, that was life, man. We loved it. Yeah. Right. Imagination. Yeah. Imagination, bro. We used that a lot growing up. Yeah, I get it. Were there, and, and, and so were there any, um, challenges for you growing up at all? Yeah. I mean, I had, you know, my mom and dad got divorced when I was seven and, and, you know, mom was not really there for us. And dad came and got us one night. She'd get to where she'd leave us at home by herself a lot. And, oh, wow. we, and the neighbors would always call my dad. And so he, one day he called the judge, said, I'm going to get him. Judge said, go get him. Wow. Dad came and got us. And my dad basically raised us. So we didn't really have, you know, a, a close relationship with my mother, which caused a lot of issues that I didn't even realize until much later in life. Yeah, where a lot of my my issues and challenges mm -hmm. and paradigms came from was from that. But once I understood it, Glenn, uh, Glenn I'm going to call you Glenn now because I got Glenn more. <laughs> and and it doesn't hurt help that it rhymes. Glenn Ken and Glenn. Ken and Glenn show the Glenn. Yeah, movie. yeah. But once I once I started to really understand that, Ken, I was able to heal a lot of that. And there's still some that that I'd be lying if I said I, there were some still lingering things, but. I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful for the upbringing that I had. I'm so grateful for my father, most wonderful man that anybody could ever ask for. And dad's 85 and still kicking. I mean, going strong. So very, very grateful for that. So as far as challenges, that was definitely a challenge. So, so, um, did, did you find yourself in, um, in, in when you were in school, did you find yourself um, rebelling against some, you seem a little bit like a rebel to me. I don't know. You know, that, that might be just something that's come a little bit later in life because I wasn't really a rebel. I mean, I, I tried huh? to be the good boy, you know, I, okay. my dad, very loving, kind, affectionate, wonderful, you know, grew up in a very loving home, um, poor growing up. My grandparents were sharecroppers and, but this, you know, read the Bible and went to church and, and ate wow. meals together and said prayers and grace and prayed at night and, you know, all that good stuff. So, no, I, I wasn't really that. I had other other challenges, you know, not feeling good enough, not feeling worthy, um, yeah. you know, because we didn't have as much as some of the other. Uh, listen, my father had got a master's degree from Duke University. So it's not like we but he had a state job. We didn't make a whole lot of money, middle class. And I had a lot of friends that were wealthy, had doctors and lawyers and dentist parents. And, and yeah. I saw that and I, and it, and it, and it, we didn't have the, the fancy Mercedes and all that kind of stuff. And so there were some insecurities that I really hid well. And I hid those with my, with my personality, with my mouth, you know, dad yeah. said I was speaking in full sentences before I was one. <laughs> right. And may not come as a surprise to people that know me. So I'm going to try to not do that today. Well, we appreciate full sentences here. So it's, it's, it's all good. So, but, but, you know, talk about like when you were um, like, did you, did you get into sports? Did you, did you, I, I mean, here you are and I don't want to give it away too soon, but you've, you've had a couple of record deals and you're this big country music star and, and um, you've actually met the, Blake Shelton and I don't know if y'all ever performed together or not, but we'll get into that. But, but, you know, you've, you've done all of this, this amazing stuff. Was there anything from your, your childhood? And I always like to, I like to fish for this man, because I feel like it's always, there's always someone, something, some event, maybe a, a collaboration of things that, that kind of push us in the direction that we go as adults. So that's kind of, is there anything that comes to mind? Like, was there anything that pushed you in the direction you went as an adult? You know, uh, honestly, and, and I'll share this with you, and I don't know that I've ever really talked much about it, but I just, the thing for me is I never saw myself growing up. 
I never saw myself getting old, Ken. Mm. I just never did. I, I, it always bothered me that I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up because I never thought I was going to grow up. Right. It, it, right. I know that, that might sound weird, but I'm still a kid at heart. I mean, I'm 57 years old and, and people just can't believe it. I don't feel I don't act it. I don't inside. I'm not that. There is no such thing as age to me. It, it's it's just a number. Um, I grew up playing baseball. I, I thought yep. that's what I wanted to do. I loved it. I loved the game. Yep. But uh, and, and we had a lot of success growing up. We were on I was on three World Series championship baseball teams in the Dixie baseball program, you know, wow. growing up. And I got a scholarship to go pitch at Alvin Community College, hometown of Nolan Ryan. Um, but and I hurt my arm. There was a lot of things that I didn't do right. Right. A lot of things I didn't know. I didn't understand. I didn't understand the right proper technique not to throw your arm out when you're, you know, 18, 19 years old. Yeah. But during that whole time, I I, I just always and, and I don't want to sound. I just always thought I was going to be famous for something one day, it, wow. and not something bad, not infamous, but I always thought <laughs> I was going to contribute something wonderful, right. something beautiful to the world. And and I, I felt I remember my dad would always and, and he still to this day picks on me about it. Yeah, but that was always my big response was, yeah, but yeah, but because I never really felt like I was understood. Mm. And I think I've lived my whole life trying to trying to understand myself, bro. Because yeah. I don't think anybody else was ever going to understand me until I understood myself, and that's that, that's another topic for a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. But um, my dad would sing to us every night before bed, and wow. those are some of the most fond. Would sing to us and pray with us every night before we go to bed, and wow. and he would put it. He dad had an old reel to reel tape player. You know the 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 little yeah. the little thin ones, but big yeah. like this. And my dad was in the army, and so one of the the little groups that he was in, they had this music group, and they would, well, I probably shouldn't say that because that's probably where pirating music started from. But <laughs> oh, somebody was in one of those music groups, and they would copy these, and they would all pitch in and, and share in the resources, and they would all get these these reel to reel tapes. Dad had boxes of them, so he would wow. put these on, and we would listen to that to go to sleep, and it was. It wasn't like country music. It was like, um, like tiny bubbles in the wine and strength mm -hmm. in the night, all that classical type stuff. Right. We would listen to. And so I started to develop um, a love of music at a very early age, but I never really thought about becoming a singer until much later. Wow. So, so you, you, you graduated high school in, in Lufkin, 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 Texas, yeah. Lufkin, Texas. And, and, um, you went on to college. Did you graduate from college? Well, I went to, I started out at Angelina college pitching, um, yeah. I had a scholarship offer from Stephen F. Austin in Nacogdoches. I, I didn't want to go to SFA. A lot of my buddies were going to Angelina college. I was, I had a girlfriend that I was very serious about and I didn't really want to leave her. And so yeah. I went to AC, it's what they called it. Some people call it almost college, but it was just a little junior college there in Lufkin and played there. And I, I quit, Ken. I quit playing my my first year. Mm. I just I don't know what was going on at the time. I really don't. I can't remember. But there was a lot of challenges. Uh, and then Liz got pregnant, so we we just up and moved to to Alvin, you know, hometown of Nolan. Right, moved to Alvin, Texas. I wa uh, waited tables and was assistant manager at Chick Fil A restaurant to put her through court reporting school. And then I, well, a turning point was when. When Chick Fil A flew me out to Atlanta to interview uh, with corporate to get my own Chick Fil A restaurant at the age of 21, wow! And I was I was offered a store in Pasadena, Texas, not Pasadena, California. Yeah. And I remember leaving that interview, and I remember having this longing, this desire that I wasn't ready to grow up. I wasn't ready to get. And I know that's terrible because I had two little kids at the time, Sarah and yeah. Ashley, tiny, tiny little girls at the time. But I wasn't ready for that, and I missed baseball, and I wanted to go. And I just decided that I, and so I, I, I quit. I put in my two weeks notice for Chick-fil-A and I picked up another waiting tables job. And I went and tried out for the baseball team at Alvin Community College. I threw five pitches and I got signed to a scholarship. And then that's what I wanted to do. And then, of course, not long after that, I blew my arm out. And I'd already discovered that I really had this desire for music. And I found out that I had a, a country voice, even though I didn't really like a whole lot of country music growing up. Right. Um, I told my, my coach, I remember, I remember just like it was yesterday, 
I gave my scholarship back. His name was Coach Bullion. I said, Coach Bullion, I'm going to give my scholarship back, give it to somebody else that's got a chance to make it. This is after he told me I didn't have a very good chance, by the way, okay? Because yeah. I asked him, you know, what are my chances? He said, Weldon, they're not very good. So said, chances well, for? To, to go on and, and to become a play pro. professional. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. So gave the scholarship back, and I said, I'm going to take up guitar, and the next time you see me, I'm going to be on TNN. So back then – the national network TNN was, was that's where you got your country music and your right. video things like that. CMT hadn't started yet. Right. So right. I told him, I said, in five years, I'm going to get a recording contract and exactly five years to the month, June of 1995, I signed to curb records. And a couple of years later, we debuted our first music video on CMT, the delivery room. And it, it's just so unbelievable. This whole visual wow. and manifesting and using the imagination and watching it happen that's before I knew what this was, but yeah. I was, I was, I was fixing, I was fixing to say, um, <laughs> you like Natalie, that? Listen, Natalie loves when I say fixing. She, <laughs> all, she always points out, she doesn't say a, as much as I thought she would since she's from Canada. I hear a all the time, but yeah. she, every time I say fixing too, she, she, I, she I, I love, I love the word fixing. I think it's great. So, so, um, so you manifested all this, you made all this happen before you knew what manifesting even was. Right. And here you were, what, 25, maybe 25, 26 years I was old. 20, I was almost 29 when I signed the record deal in, in 1995. I was oh, okay. And, almost, and you were on CMT country music television. Yeah. We had a couple of music videos on CMT when we had our deal at curb. Yeah. It was, that was freaking wow. dude. I, it was freaking awesome, man. It was freaking wow. awesome. I, I'll never forget that either. That's so cool, dude. So, so, um, where did things go for you from there? Like you, 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 um, here you are now. I mean, dude, you're on CMT. You're balling, man. I mean, that, that's legit, right? I listen, I just, I just cracked myself up because when you <laughs> asked that question, I, I did that. And the first thing that popped into my mind was Glenn Morshower saying, you just went to reflection bill. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real place people by the way that's a real place reflectionville some it people is here some people it's over here but it's when yeah. you it's when in in somebody says something and in your mind you can go to that that time yeah. that place and you can start to see it i live way too much of my life in reflectionville I, i'm i'm always in my imagination going places but but yeah i think, I think, that, I think that's a good thing well, it's a good thing if you understand the power of it. Yes. And we'll get into that because that's that's that was a huge revelation or or uh, awareness or understanding of the imagination and how powerful it truly is and what you yeah. can do with it when you understand it. So, yes, I didn't understand that back then. I was what Bob Proctor would call an unconscious competent where which he got from Zig Ziglar. And, and you know what? That's great that you point that out because Bob used to say this all the time. I got a license to black, brag because none of this is mine. I learned that. <laughs> right. Now, right. but that's being very modest because Bob did. There was a lot of things that he did that he yeah. did. Oh, work. gosh. But he did but, pick up these powerful yeah. uh, uh, truths and, and expounded on them in a way that, that a guy from East Texas could understand. Yeah. Instead of getting too deep yeah. too fast. So, so, so you, you're on, you're on back to my question. You just went off on a, a different, Sorry. different country road. Um, so, but so, so you were on CMT. Um, I mean, there's gotta be a certain amount of ego that starts kicking in at that point. I mean, you gotta feel pretty good about yourself and I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all. But like you're you're literally you're in your your late twenties and you're on country music television, dude. That's that's pretty legit. You know, Ken, and and it's again looking back, looking back. Yep. On the memory, of, don't get me. See, you're gonna get me going down another road. <laughs> you can't do that. You, I'm the guy that you can't do that to. <laughs> I don't stick to the script unless I'm in the script. Um, but seriously. Um, to see now, I've got lost. I'm lost out in some dirt. We're we're we're, we're on country music television, CMT, okay. CMT. The ego, the ego. So ego. yes, yeah. I probably did, but I didn't really understand it, Ken, um, because I remember that was one of the things that I would notice about how other people would treat me, and right. I never wanted to be that way. And I remember 
record and I've got it somewhere where I put the camera in front of me and I recorded speaking to myself. And again, this is before I knew what the, how to, what this stuff was. But I remember telling myself, don't ever get the big head, Kevin. Don't ever forget the struggles and where you came from. You're no better than anybody else, but you go and, and do the very best you can. But don't ever get the big head. And, and I remember saying that I'm not going to say explicitly what I said, but I got pretty graphic about what somebody should do to me if I ever got that to that point. And, and I don't know that I did. Now, there may be some other people that maybe perceived um, that that I was that I had that ego or that I was cocky or whatever. But in my heart, I never wanted to be that person, Ken. Right. And I still don't. Right. And, and, I, and I think that was also part of my of my and I, I hate using the word problem, but a part of my challenge after I lost my record deal was that I went to the other side and I started dumbing down and I started pulling back because I didn't want to outshine anybody around me because I knew what that felt like. And so yeah. I had to re-embrace my talents. And that's what Bob Proctor helped me do in 2019. That's why I went to see him yeah. was because I was really struggling with living my life and balancing that with the people that were around me that I didn't, that I knew probably weren't going to really do much. Right. I didn't want to outshine anybody. But I realize now that God put a light in me, Ken. He He put something in me that I'm supposed to share. And if I don't do that, I'm not going to be a very effective human being. I'm not going to be very happy. And so I've had to learn how to balance that. And, it, and it's been a challenge. I'll be honest with you. It's been a challenge. Well, I just, and you know, I, I, I love, oh, man, I want to run like the horse. I feel like the racehorse at the gate, that, that right. they let the gate out. And then when they let the gate out, like, is it okay for me to run fast? Let, let me, let me, let me say this, man. I, I Something that changed my life. Grant Cardone said, um, if you're not willing to toot your own horn, how in the hell do you expect other people to do it? And, and, you know, and then Marianne Williamson wrote a book, a return to love. And, and it's one of her favorite books. Yes. I, it's an amazing book and, and, and her poem and, and, you know, there's nothing noble about shrinking yourself. So other people don't feel insecure around you. And, and I, I think that so many people in life and you're what you're talking about, it, we, we people in, have this tendency of of doing exactly what you said, shrinking, so they don't make other people around them feel small. And that's not about that. That's about you, man. Right? And so, so I'm sure Bob Proctor said something way more brilliant than that. But it was pretty much the exact right in that same vein, you know. Yeah, I, I and I only know it because I've been there, man. I bought the T-shirt and wore it out. So, so, so talk about like, so you, you just said you lost the record deal. How long did you have this record deal? We signed. What's a record deal? What's that even mean? I don't even know what that means. Yeah. Well, it, it, okay. This is something I wish I would have understood as well, because Bob says you saw in your mind that you were going to get a record deal in five years. I told everybody I'm going to get a record deal in five years. Yeah. My first paid gig was in June of 1990 in Bayou Vista, Texas, I signed my recording contract with Curb Records in June of 1995. So I called that five years before. And, and again, it, this is how all this, the law of attraction and visualization and, and manifestation works. I didn't realize it at the time, but a, a record deal, and this is what we said we want. I want a record deal. Well, you know what? You might get a record deal, but you might not ever have a hit record. You might not, they might not ever even release your album. Right. So I wasn't specific. And this is something I've learned. You be very specific about what you desire. Yep. I just said, I want a record deal. I got a record deal. That's signing a contract that a record label says we are going to, um, we believe in you and we're going to record a record on you. Right, and right. That doesn't mean that they're going to promote it. That doesn't mean that you're going to have a hit. That doesn't mean you're going to make any money. Doesn't right. Anything. Right. But I did. I signed a record deal in June of 1995 and it lasted about, oh, almost five years. So it was, it was at the end of 1999 or the, yeah, I think it was at the end of 1999, whenever I was part of a duo, when my partner decided that he didn't want to be a part of the duo and he didn't want to pursue that direction anymore. And he resigned from, and then I had a meeting with, uh, with Curb Records and they said, listen, just because he, he left doesn't mean you don't have a home here. You've got a home here as long as you want. Well, at the time, unfortunately, 
my record producer, the guy that found me and, and brought me to Curb Records. At the time, he had a partnership with Curb. That partnership wow. got strained. He parted ways. He was offered an opportunity to go be the head of another record, major record label in Nashville. And he called me into his office one day and said, I'm going to ask for your release from Curb. I'm going to take you with me to this other record label. And you're going to get to do your music and you're going to get to do what you want. He said, you're a star. We believe in you. Well, after I got that release from the deal, yeah, my producer, they, they chose to pass on him for that head of the label deal. And oh crap! It, it, just like that, Ken, it, it was gone. It was done, and and I literally didn't believe it. I didn't. I said, "Oh, it's that's no big deal. We'll just pick right up next month." And next month turned wow. to next month, turned to next month, turned to credit cards getting charged up, turned to no income, turned to I'm too ashamed or embarrassed to go and ask for a five hundred dollar gig somewhere to keep my bills paid. To mm-hmm. I had to pack up and move back to Lufkin, Texas, with my tail between my legs and. Wow. I'll share, I'll share an incident uh, that happened in a minute, but that's what happened. It was it just like that. It was gone. And I oh, thought that it was never going to end, but it did. Wow. 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 That sucks. And and listen, that's after having Waylon Jennings write a song for you and sing on wow. your record and Charlie Daniels putting you on stage with him to sing long haired country boy, even though I don't have long hair in front of 180,000 people oh at my the music God. fest with CMT there filming the whole event. You go from that to nobody will even look at you when you walk down, you know, music row, because that's what happens when you lose a deal. You're, you're no, no touchy for two years. I didn't know that at the time. And instead of fighting, and I don't like that word, but instead of staying there and, and being Kevin Blake Weldon, I got, just guts ripped out and heartbroken and just went back to East Texas. And it took me a little bit, but I did recover and then things took off again. But where where, were you in Nashville when, when all that went down? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Interesting. So you go back to East Texas, get your bearings about you. Did you go back to waiting tables? (laughs) No, no, I didn't. I, I, here's what I did. I knew that I could make money with, with, with my talent. Yeah. And so I just started picking up any gig I could find. And fortunately for me, I had enough um, uh, clout, you know, from the the record deal that yeah. there was pretty awesome opportunities that came about. I was able, I started getting hired to do uh, uh, fundraising banquets for nonprofit organizations. And that opened up a door to hear somebody from this organization would hear about me. Then I would, got asked to start writing songs for different organizations. And then I got into emceeing and I really crushed it when I started emceeing these fundraising banquets and taking, uh, helping these, these organizations triple what they brought in the year before to when I was there, I would mix in my, my style of emceeing and entertaining, you know, with the crowd and, and getting involved with the auctioneer and helping dude. Yeah. It was awesome. And so I did a bunch of that over the next, you know, two or three years. Okay, so didn't you get another record deal eventually? Okay, so I was singing at this little bar in my hometown, little hole in the wall place called the Dudes Club. It's not business anymore. As a matter of fact, the whole building's been demolished. There's a freeway there. Wow. And one night I was singing and I went up to the bar during my break to have a, a salty dog. That was my drink. And there was a, a what? What is it? A salty dog. It's grapefruit juice and vodka with salt on the rim. That was my favorite drink at the oh time. So anyway, I'm having my salty dog, and there's this very attractive woman sitting at the bar. I'd never seen her before, never seen her since. And she looked over at me, and she goes, you make me sick. And I don't usually get that, okay? Whoa! I'm, I'm like, dude, I'm like, you know, I'm like, what? And she goes, you make me sick. I said, what? what? What's up? I said, she goes, I can't believe you. She goes, what are you doing? No, no, that's what she asked me first. What are you doing? I said, I'm <laughs> taking a break. She goes, no, what are you doing here? Oh. I, said, I don't understand. She goes, I, I can't remember if she called me Blake or not, but she goes, she goes, you make me sick. You have <laughs> all this talent and you are wasting it away in this place. Oh, she, come on, man. She got up and she walked out. Holy and crap. 
You want to talk about somebody smacking you over the head with a two by four? Yeah. That, that I will. I, I, I don't know who this woman was. I've never seen her before. Never seen her since. Have no idea. I just, in my imagination, I keep thinking that that was a, an angel. That was, that was a messenger that was sent specifically to get my attention. Yeah. And dude, I mean, I could literally get, get very emotional right now because that freaking woke me up. And I was, at the time, Ken, I realized that I do have talent and, and yeah. I, have to, I, I can't just sit here. And so that's when mm. I decided to write another album and, and I didn't have any money. I, I, I didn't want to ask anybody. I, I just, I found a way to make it happen. I recorded another album and, and started promoting it in Texas and, and got on a little, created my own promotional tour. I had a guy that had a t-shirt company agreed to make me some t-shirts and, and donate those. And it just, next thing you know, I've got a, I've got a new record out. It wasn't great, you know, because I didn't have $250,000 to record an album like they did in Nashville. Yeah. But I did write and produce the new record and put it out. And then I started getting some airplay in Texas. And I remember when the song, debuted on the texas music chart it debuted at number 18 it was a song called here goes and called what called here goes here goes here goes and <clears throat> number 19 blake shelton <laughs> on a major record deal with a song called austin oh and my course, God. everybody knows what happens it goes straight to number one the next week he's at number one i'm still at number, number 18 but i've got a picture it's blake weldon at number 18 and right underneath me, Blake Shelton at number 19. Wow. And, and, and I'm like, crap. <laughs> and that's when I went out. As soon as I saw that, I knew I had to do something. So I went and I, I <laughs> said, well, I probably ought to go get a website. So yeah. people know who I am. And, and I went and I got the domain name, Kevin Blake and, and started going by, cause I grew up going by Kevin. But when I started playing country music, Ken, there was an artist in Nashville that had a record deal named Kevin Welch. I'm like, Kevin Welch, Kevin Weldon. That's way too close. I'll just go by Blake. I'll go by Blake Weldon. <laughs> then Blake Weldon, Blake Shelton. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Oh, Lord so have mercy. I went by Kevin Blake Weldon. And there's still people that call me Blake. My family and friends that have known me my whole life call me Kevin. I answer to either one. It, it, it's, But when I hear Blake, I'll know it's somebody that either prefers that name or knew me during my music. So, so, but you, 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 didn't you have some kind of a, 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 a thing where you and, and Blake Shelton met and had a chat about it? Well, we were at the time very big in the, I was very big in the outdoors industry. Um, that, that's another part of my career where I got into writing these comedy parody redneck hunting songs and it just blew up and went viral. That still can keeps me alive. I still get paid from that. So I'm very grateful. You really? Wow. Uh, that music opened up a lot of opportunities within the outdoor industry. So I was at the, at the ATA show, the archery trade association show. And um, this would have been in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah. Blake Shelton was there. And I remember we were talking backstage and he goes, he goes, man, you won't believe how many times we get asked to play that song. The wish by Blake and Brian. I, I have to tell him that I wasn't part of the Blake and Brian duo. I'm Blake Shelton, not Blake and Brian. <laughs> That's you, know, so you, won't, you won't believe how many times people you know ask me to to play uh austin <laughs> i had to tell them sorry that's not me man <laughs> oh yeah so but but we never we never had a chance to to do anything together there was an opportunity um on a on a ranch in texas a bow hunting ranch where uh i had this uh this little i called it the bad bob and jimmy mobile it was this little minivan looking thing that was all decorated with my love. That's a great story. You need to tell that story, dude, because that's well, a great story. Okay. Um, we're kind of backtracking a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Okay, so during this this time, this transition time of of post Nashville recording contract and and present Kevin Blake Weldon struggling to, to make ends meet, right? You know, doing what I needed to do. I was um I was trying to get a sponsorship for a, a truck um, because my truck was on at 300,000 miles and it's, it's on its last leg. And I need, so I'm thinking, well, I'll just write a, a jingle for a, a dealership, you know, car dealership. So I started reaching out to all my buddies, had a buddy that had a really good friend that owned a Chevy dealership in Mississippi, wound up meeting up with this guy, asking if he'd be interested in me writing a jingle, if he would, you know, sponsor me for a truck. He saw that I'd had a recording contract in the past. And so, Next thing you know, I, I get this 
deal, a one year uh, deal to write this guy commercial. And then he's going to put me in a brand new truck. So I get this uh, Chevy Tahoe anyway. So while we're out on this guy's boat fishing at Grenada Lake, I said, you guys don't hunt deer. Do he goes, do we hunt deer? He goes, we don't even need a license. We don't care if it's season. We I'm like, Oh man, you're going to love this. So let me back up just a little bit. I was doing one of those events for the national wild Turkey Federation. They brought me in. They didn't have enough to pay my, or they, they didn't want to pay my full fee. So they said, how about we pay you half, but we give you a free deer hunt. I'm like, man, back then somebody could offer me a free deer hunt and I would take it. So now I'm hunting deer in Illinois. I'm sitting there one night, we're having some beers and I had been known to just change the words up to songs and make them up off the cuff. And people are like, that's brilliant. You should write that down. I'd, I'd never write it down and I would forget it the next day. Somebody knew that and told his wife who was there to get, you know, write this down. He's, he's making up one of those songs again. And I started changing the words up to this Tim McGraw song, Country Boys and Girls Getting Down the Farm. And I started making a song up. Everybody's busting out laughing. We're drinking some beers. Go to sleep. Don't go up, wake up the next morning, go hunt. Come back in. There's this legal pad sitting out on the on the bar area. And I go pick it up. I, oh, I remember that. I started laughing. That's actually pretty good. So I grabbed the guitar and I started singing it. And I wrote a next verse. And, and then it dawned on me, dude, you should record this. Every mm. year they play this song called the 30 point buck. Did you see the 30 point buck, the 30 pointer? So people in the hunting industry knew that song. I'm like, we need some more hunting songs. <laughs> well, I wrote this song. Well, and then I wrote one more. It was a parody of Travis Tritt. I'm a member of a country club and I called it, I ain't no member of no hunting club. And everybody just busting out laughing. So now I'm back on the boat with, with Scott and his two buddies and they're saying, do we hunt? I said, I got something to play for you. So I played him this song and they about fell out of the boat. And he goes, you have got to come to the office tomorrow morning. We got to talk. He goes, we want to, we want to back that. So that wow. was the first investor. They put up like 30 grand and we went and recorded that actually we recorded two albums, Posted Places and Redneck Hunter. And they yeah. went viral. So I'm in Jackson, Mississippi, doing a, a show of this big deer expo. We get there a day early. We're riding around just looking at the sites. We pass by this, this place called Power Sports Plus. It was a, a power sports dealership. They sell like ATVs and motorcycles yeah. and different things like that. Well, at the time, importing these little Japanese mini trucks was a thing. They would import these things in for like two, three hundred bucks a piece yep. and they'd like uh, uh, shipping containers at a time. And they would refurb them and they would they would put lift kits on them, uh, camouflage wrapped and, and sell them as hunt vehicles. And they were like getting 20 times like my, they may pay five hundred bucks. They, they may get eight, ten thousand for these things. So it's yeah. a big business. Yeah, they got, one, they got this little Daihatsu high jet little van looked like a scooby-doo mobile sitting out on the lot and i'm like that because i called my project bad bob and jimmy i didn't want people to know that kevin blake weldon was now doing cletus t judd weird al yankovic stuff <laughs> so i wanted to keep it separate because i didn't want people not to take my serious music serious right so right under the name bad bob and jimmy and i did bad, all called it bad baba bad bob and jimmy Bad Bob and Jimmy. Okay. Yeah, Bad Bob and Jimmy. And it, okay. it just freaking blew up and went viral. Wow. But they didn't know it was me. All right. It was, they thought it was these two redneck characters named Bad Bob and Jimmy. And I did the voices. I, I had like eight different voices that I did. Anyway, oh God, I see this fan. I'm like, that's the Bad Bob and Jimmy mobile. I can see it now. And I literally started imagining what I would do if I had it. I would get that thing camouflage wrap. I'd put my logo on the side. It had this big welded hunting platform on the top. And by the way, it is a challenge for me to say hunting because I really want to say hunting. But I want to make sure that you don't think I said Bad Bob and Bubba. So <laughs> hunting, hunting uh, platform on the top with a ladder welded. And the ladder would fold up and, and go across the side. Anyway, the ladder was down. There's this platform up there. It's got camouflage netting around it, two boat seats sitting up there. I'm like, that would be like my portable stage. I would I would take that that railing off and I would put my speakers up there and I would have a like a flat screen TV hanging on the side. I could open up the back. I could put my table chairs and my boxes of CDs and T-shirts and, and I could take this thing to hunt shows and it could be like my stage and my my um, my sound system and also my booth all in one. And, and I'm like literally describing this to my buddies. We get to the hunting show the very next day and I'm playing and singing and I'm selling a few CDs and all of a sudden people, more and more people start coming and I'm selling CDs like they're going out of style, dude. And I finally had to take a break after about two hours. I'm like, man, I got to take a break. 
So I started walking around. I go down two or three rows and I hear my song playing, one of my, my songs. I'm like, ooh, somebody's playing my music. I got to go see who that is. I go over there and it's that Power Sports Plus dealership, Ken. No wow. There they are. They got a booth and they're playing my songs. I'm like, this wow. is cool. And they got a, the, one of their little trucks with the doors open with a CD and, and, they're, and they're coming out their speakers and people are flocking to the booth. What's this music? They're sending people over to my booth. So I got like a free sales force working for them. <laughs> right, right. And, and I said, hey, I'm the guy that, oh, we love your songs. You need to come see us on Monday. I said, yeah, because y'all got this van out in your lot and I want that. Y'all need to sponsor me. I said, you got to come see us. I'm not shitting. I'm not crapping you. <laughs> three, three weeks later, I have that van exactly wrapped. as I described it. Wrapped cam with my camo sponsors mm -hmm. wrap on it. They paid for the wrap. Yeah. Sponsor. My logo, my Bad Baba Jimmy logo on the door with <laughs> A flat screen plasma TV that they also sold at Power Sports Plus. So they gave me a flat wow. plasma flat screen mounted on the side of this to show my video. Wow. They paid wow. for t-shirts. So we had all these t-shirts, another run of all my CDs. Wow. My PA system up on top. And dude, they bought me a brand new extended cab Dodge <laughs> diesel truck and trailer to haul it with. That is awesome. They put a hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars into my Bad Bob and Jimmy project, and it just wow. exploded. And the wow. next thing you know, I'm doing all these different shows and all these all over the country, playing these hunting songs, and 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 I've got commercials out on on the the outdoor TV, and I'm selling CDs like they're going out of style. I'm Thirty, forty thousand dollars a month in these CDs. I'm selling these CDs like they're going out of style. Wow! And then everything started to shift away from CDs to digital downloads, and yeah. the sales, the ad rate started going up. The sales started coming down, and then I basically just got, I got run out of business as far as that wow. method of, of yeah. selling. But thankfully, I had that Ken because I eventually uploaded it all to the internet, and so I every Monday I get paid steal from that stuff that I did 15 years ago. Do you really? Every Monday I get, I get royalties that come in. So, Oh my God. So, so grateful. And, and, and eventually because my serious music kind of took a back seat, then nobody knew that that was me. So then I started going by, uh, instead of bad Bob and Jimmy, Kevin Blake Weldon as bad Bob and Jimmy. Uh, and then, and then, I, then I went away from Bad Bob and Jimmy to just Kevin Blake Weldon's funny hunting songs. And that's what it's built under now. Wow. There, I'm not going to go into the whole detail, but there was another very interesting thing that happened during that time. There was a new network out in Denver that was opening up to do outdoor stuff. They heard yeah. me at the shot show. They brought me in as their spokesperson, gave me free airtime. I put out a TV show for a few months called Posted wow. Place, No Market. And then I told them my idea of my animated TV show around Bad Bob and Jimmy. And they signed it. They brought in an animator and we started developing. I wrote four pilot, uh, oh. uh, uh, four pilot episodes of this um, uh, redneck. It, it was called, um, uh, what was the name of it? Um, Bucktown was going to be the name of it. And wow. it was all about the characters that I had developed in this Bad Bob and Jimmy project. And we had all kinds of big corporate sponsors that said, we want to back that. We want to back that. And I would implement their brand or their product into the episodes. We went to, we met with a, an animation company in Austin and we got the budget and then the network folded. So that all, that all to the back. Well, I've had those, Ken, where you get going yeah, when <laughs> you crash and burn, and that's what eventually led me to to investing to go see Bob Proctor. So, 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 do me a favor, man. I got, I, I got a request for you. Sing a couple of bars, a few bars of a Bad Bob and Jimmy song. Oh my God, are you serious, dude? I'm serious, man. Come on. Uh, okay. Oh, got, look at that. He's got I, his guitar. See Taylor here. Hey, so, is that the one that I saw the other night? Yeah, this is this is the one. This is um, yeah. There, yeah. We'll, have, we'll have to do another show one to just tell you. How yeah. This. Just, just do a couple. Uh, oh, look! Look who's watching. Can you There's see that? Josh. What's up, Josh? How you doing, bro? What's up, Josh? You can talk about talent. That guy right there's got serious pipes, man. Serious. Dude, pipes. he's got. He's. It's crazy. So here, okay. so here, here we go. 
Bad ever, Bob and Jimmy. Have you ever heard that song, um, The Thunder Rolls by Garth Brooks? Of course, yeah. This ain't it. <laughs> Three thirty in the morning, not a soul in sight. A steering wheel in my left hand and a spotlight in my right. Out looking for a big buck, cause there's a contest to win. I can't let old bad Bob beat me out again. So the spotlight glows. Yeah, the spotlight glows. <laughs> Game warden sleeping in his house across town. It's a good thing I mailed his wife that Victoria's Secret gown. Asking for a miracle as my buck walks into sight. Warden ain't the only one who's getting lucky tonight. Spotlight glows. Yeah, the spotlight glows. Um, by the way, that is Brett Favre's, the Brett Favre Hall of Famer quarterback. That's Brett Favre's favorite Bad Bob and Jimmy song. Are, Are you kidding, kidding me? And I, and I can't tell you the story that Brett told me of why that's his favorite song, but I was performing at this hunting camp, and again, there goes hunting. So, Glenn, you got it stuck in my head. Oh, um, yeah. Down in Louisiana, all right? Um, and they hired me to come in for three weeks to entertain all of their clients, and I got to stay there, eat there, hunt all I wanted, and I just had to do a 45-minute set every night after dinner. And Brett Favre was was uh, the guy that owned the company. It was uh, LHC, Louisiana Healthcare Group. His son was really good friends with Brett. Brett would come hunt with him. So wow. Brett was there, and I was doing my set. And I'm singing this song, and Brett's busting out laughing. He's got tears rolling down his face. He's like, Kevin, we got to go out, and uh, I got to tell you this story. So he, I can't repeat it, but it was it was a lot like my song. Wow. So, that's a, So I take these songs, Ken, and just change the words up. I just have fun. Make look, what Glenn, look what Glenn says. Glenn's watching, man. I'm friends with a plumber who also <laughs> – yeah, well, I, I'm, that, I'm just did, Glenn didn't say he was about to go lay some pipe because did you see did you see uh, what he said earlier? Let's see, I changed my name to Glenn Morshower when I met Lonnie Lesbath. No, I didn't see what he said earlier. <laughs> this is great. You guys are uh, listen. We we could seriously go for six days uh if we get this crew together, and we maybe should do that. Maybe we should do the Ken and Glenn marathon, raise some money for the <laughs> That's awesome, dude. So, so, so you, you did the, so you really, you did that. It sounds like this, um, parody thing that you, you started doing is where you really started kind of taking off. Well, you know, it, it, I hate to say it. Well, I don't hate to say it. Cause then I'm, I'm putting it out there that I hate it. I don't hate it. I'm so grateful for it, Ken. It saved my life, bro. Yeah. I mean, it, it allowed me to, do what I love to do, which is to entertain. Now, would I rather be taken seriously as a serious artist over a parody artist? Well, I used to say, yeah, but now it's like, you know what? That's something that I created. That's part of my life. I, and yeah. I can't tell you how many people and companies and organizations that I've met and entertained for over the years because of that. So I'm very grateful for it. But yes, it went viral. You know, I've got some music videos out on YouTube that have had well over 3 million views. And this wow. is, and, and Ken, this is stuff that I did by myself. No yeah. record deal, no manager, no booking agent, no publicist, no nothing. Right, right. And, and it's because of of what happened in Nashville. I got crushed, and and I just didn't I didn't trust to let go. I wanted to keep control of everything, so that I never had to experience that hurt again. But what it did is it is it really limited me on how big that could have gotten because that was a multi million dollar idea and company that I created around that. And I, I didn't have anybody to guide me. I did for, for a period of time I did. And there was a, a major record label in Nashville that wanted, and, and this is how bad it was. They wanted to sign me and they were going to take all this music to Walmart, but they were going to sell the CDs for $6 and 98 cents a piece. And I was getting $15 hand over fist all day long. I said, you guys don't understand. There's nobody out there doing this. Why do we have to mark it down to six ninety eight? dollars And then by the time everybody gets your cut, I'm making like 30 or 40 cents a piece off of it. Yeah. I didn't see the bigger picture, but 30 mm -hmm. or 40 cents times 5 million records would have been more than $14.99 <laughs> off of, you know, 50,000. Right. So, right. And then, I had, yeah. But anyway, uh, it, it right. yes, I'm so grateful for it, Ken. It, it, it literally, 
it, I'm not going to say it changed my life, but it was obviously something that was that was I was supposed to do, and I'm so grateful. I mean, bro, you're still getting paid. <laughs> like, you know what? And, and listen, and I, I'm actually seriously <laughs> considering doing a fifth volume. I've got four volumes out. I haven't done one in a few years. I well, let, let me ask. Let me ask you a question around that right there. Why wouldn't you? Um, it's not that I wouldn't. It's it right now. It's about priorities. And my priority right now is, is my, I'm, I'm so I've, I've written a couple of movie scripts and this is something that I really have been wanting for years to move into. And I have a Christmas movie script that I wrote called the wish list that I'm very, very excited about. It's something that, that means more to me than anything else I've ever done. And wow. that is my main desire and my main focus that I want to see manifested over the next year or so. So that's really where I'm going and I'll get back to that a little later, but right now this is where my focus is at. So, so, um, my buddy Jeffrey Wolf says I experienced Kevin playing for a group of about 150. Amazing. Engaged the audience performed like it was 20,000 always goes the extra mile with people. I mean, I just sat in a crowd of uh, it was close to 20,000, maybe 15, like literally 15 or 20 people, yeah, but, but it was, all, but you, you, he's, you did the same exact thing, you and Josh. And, and so let's go, let's, let's have a little bit of a shift here. Um, Bob would call it a paradigm shift. Let's have a little, little shift here and talk about the moment that you, um, I don't know about the moment, what led up to, your relationship, your friendship, your meant being mentored by the one and only Mr. Bob Proctor. How did that all come about, dude? This, this is truly just and look what Glenn just said about your script. I come love, on with it. Come on with it. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Glenn Moore Shower. You know, I'm I'm just I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful. I mean, I don't even know what other there's no other word to describe the way I feel about my life. And I'm so grateful for everything, all the crap, all the heartbreak, the betrayal, the stupid decisions. I made the mistakes, everything. I'm grateful because it's got me to this point right now where I, and I'm surrounded by some amazing people and Jeffrey Wolf. Thank you. If it weren't for Jeffrey Wolf, I wouldn't have met Glenn and Carolyn and which in turn, I wouldn't have met you Ken. So Jeffrey Wolf, thank you. Wolfie. Thank you. Wolfie for yeah. being something in me that that gave you the confidence to say, I need to introduce you to these people. So that's how I want to live my life, Ken, is I want to be a person of value and I want to be someone that people would not be ashamed to say, hey, I, I know this guy, maybe you should listen to what he's got to say. So yeah. very grateful for that. Um, in 2018, I had gone through a really, really challenging period and it won't get in. We don't have the time to get into it. Very yeah, we do. We got eight, dude. It was just say it was a very challenging period that goes all the way back to a failed second marriage in 2013 that I rushed into without really knowing what I was doing because I was lonely. And, and it turned out to be just an absolute train wreck disaster. Almost it, it almost destroyed my whole life. And after I started to recover from that, I started to search and um I'd seen the movie, The Secret, which most people have back in 2006. And I knew who Bob Proctor was and I loved Bob. I just, I would, for some reason, the moment I watched that movie, The Secret, he was the guy that I was drawn yeah. to. Yeah. And over the, the next few years, I would, you know, hear some stuff, but I never really got into it because I was caught up with Bad Bob and Jimmy at the time. All right. <laughs> so right. I it, fast forward to 2018 after, after just, I didn't have a serious relationship after I got divorced, uh, filed for divorce from that second marriage. And, and I'm not a person that likes to be alone. And I was not a person to ever go more than a week or two without a girlfriend, bro. I mean, I, I liked the companionship of a beautiful woman and I always had a girlfriend and I went three and a half years with no serious relationship. And I finally felt like I was ready and I wanted to become the very best version of myself. So I started following Bob again. Um, and then in November of 2018, I saw something on YouTube that caused me to take action and reach out to Bob's company. I reached out to Bob's company. Someone responded and got on a call with me the very next day. And they were talking about this big event, a very exclusive event that Bob was doing in Toronto. 
And I said, something is telling me that I have to go to this event. And I had, I had bad money paradigms, Ken. Okay. And I mean, I wasn't making a whole lot of money, but I had a little bit of money saved up and I figured it was probably going to take everything that I had to go to this event. When the sales guy told me how much it cost, I didn't flinch. I didn't get a feeling in the pit of my stomach, nothing. $15,000 to go spend six days with Bob Proctor in a group of less than 100 people. Right. And the opportunity to get to go to his home after the event was over. Right. And I knew I had to go. So I put a deposit down. I paid it off before I went. And in March of 2019, I went to that event. I brought my guitar. I brought my hat. I had created a vision board just like Bob had, had showed me how to, because they found out what I wanted to do, show me how to create this vision board of attracting a specific type of person into my life. I created this vision board in December of 2018. I, I put on this big vision board, I will meet and become friends with Bob Proctor and I will meet everyone at the matrix and everyone at the matrix will know who I am and about me and about my music. And out of that, my life will change. I wrote this down. I go to the event, I take my guitar. I'm the only person there with a cowboy hat. So of course people notice that. <laughs> and and right. every eat I started, people would come up to me and want to know my story and who I was. And I would do the same. And the next thing you know, I've met, you know, 20, 30 people. And I'm like, well, hey, I brought my guitar. And they said, well, you should sing for us. So in the evening times, I'd sit out in the lobby and play and sing. And first evening there'd be eight or 10. The next evening there'd be 30. Wow. Well, that, that second evening, Bob's son, Brian Proctor, was going up the escalator and heard me and saw the crowd around me and told his dad, said, the guy with the cowboy hat's a really good singer. And then some of the people in the PGI organization also went to Brian and he said, yeah, I've mentioned it to dad. Bob comes up to me the next day and says, hey, I, I hear you're I hear you're a really good singer. And I, I didn't miss it. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> he said, would you like to because I knew that's what Bob would want to hear. And I said, yes, sir. And he said, would you like to get up and sing a couple of songs after the break? And I said, I would love to. Wow. So I got up on stage. I performed and they actually filmed it. And it's that that video clip is actually on YouTube. Kevin Blake Weldon performs at The Matrix. Wow. And you guys can go and hear five minutes of Bob talking about. He said, you just look like a star. He says, I know a, a Hollywood movie producer that I've been working with for years, got him Phil Goldfine. He said, I'm going to reach out to Phil. I'm going to see that Phil gets in touch. I'm going to see that Phil puts you in a movie. That's what started this whole dream again of wanting to, to have a movie. So after that, Bob just, Bob, I was on Bob's radar. Bob invited me to come out. He said, um, I said, we went all to because movie. All because of Brian. Not all because of Brian, but. Well, hearing that, you. That was one yeah. of. I made yeah. the decision to go. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that, there you go. I yeah. made the decision yeah. to go and spend that money. Amen. Amen. How many times have we not made the decision because we were afraid of spending money? Oh, because my I'm gonna God. Tell you right now, money, yes, we need it. But Bob says it's like oxygen. Yeah, you got to have it. But when you put that over your own life, your own desires, and you let that get in the way, you will never be what you could be. And I never. I was tired of that. Oh, and so say it again. Say it again for the people in the back. If you Come put on. money ahead of your own life, your own desires, what you would truly love. And that's what you're. It, it, we could get into a long debate about that, but just don't let that stop you from doing what you know you're called to do. Amen. There, Amen. If you make the decision, the way will show itself to you. That's another Amen. thing Bob taught me. So anyway, we I, I go. Um, I'd always heard that if you catch Bob at the right time and ask him for some extra time, he would take some time. The, with the day we were at his house, I found him alone for just a split second. I went up to him and said, Bob, I don't care how long it takes. And I said the same thing to Glenn Morshower. I don't care how long it takes. I'm going to be in town. I can stay here. If I, I don't have to be in back in Texas for another week. If there's any time that I could spend with you, I would love to be able to spend a little bit of time with you. And Bob says, well, I'm leaving to go on vacation tomorrow. But if you could be at the house at 10 o'clock in the morning, I, I would love to, to spend a little bit of time with you. I Come went to on. Out, Are you Bob, serious? Sitting in his studio on his couch for 40 minutes. And I got one-on-one -on -one time with Bob. And that's what really blossomed our relationship. He wow. saw my passion, my desire. He said, hey, what are you doing? And he gets on the phone and asks his assistant when the paradigm shift event in L.A. was going to be. 
He said, what are you doing April 25th, 26th, and 27th? I want to bring you out to LA. I want you to perform on stage. There'll be 500 people there. It'll live stream to 5,000 people around the world. I want to introduce you to Phil Goldfine. I'm going to see that he puts you in a movie. Him saying all that, when he said the dates, Ken, the first thought that popped into my mind is that is where I'm going to meet the love of my life. Not the movies, not the stage, not Why? that's where I'm going to meet the love of my life. Because I had put on my dream, on my vision board, I will meet her before May of 2019. Wow. Met Natalie April the 26th at that event. And she hit every single thing I had written down on that vision board. 37 things all the way down to she likes to snow ski. We live an hour and a half from Banff. <laughs> she has her own fitted ski boots, bro. I mean, that's, that's, where, awesome. I met Natalie. that's where I met <laughs> Phil Goldfine. And that just reinforced <laughs> my understanding and belief of how the law of attraction works, yep. tension works, decision works, and everything has shifted for me. Yeah. Now, does it mean that everything is magically delicious like Cocoa Puffs? No, it does not. <laughs> but I understand now when I do go through those challenges, I understand what it is. And as Glenn Morshower says, I don't go to um, Gutenpist and, and set up residence. All right. Right. I get, I get Gutenpist. I go through the town. Right. Stop and have breakfast. Maybe I might even spend a night or two at the local motel, but I ain't staying in freaking Gutenpist. <laughs> I, I know what that does. And I don't do that. I love how he, that, that yeah. analogy that he uses with that story, because I talk about that a lot, but now I talk about it in Glenn Morshower terms, Guten pissed. I love that, dude. I love it. So, 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 so you met Nat, and this is in 2000, and we know Bob passed away. Just what, what's it been now? Last February. Last February. Jeez. Yeah, almost two years now. And I've, I've, um, I, I, I'm, I was talking to his assistant, um, about him being on the show right in that, 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 um, is it Gina? I think Gina yeah. that I, yeah, I told, I told Brian cause Brian is a friend of mine now and, and he's been on the show and he's a, an amazing human Brian. being. Have you read his book? My father oh, knew the so secret. Good. Yeah. So Ooh. good. Probably so. Yeah, it's right next to me too. That's, I got um, a book right there too. What? Let me ask you because I uh, just so everybody knows, if y'all don't stick around, you're gonna miss it. Um, Kevin's gonna perform, do a little performance for us, right? Still, I, I've, I've got the guitar tuned up, bro. You never have to ask me twice. You got, you got time. I don't, <laughs> I don't want you to be late for an appointment. Well, I carved out the next six months just for you. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. I, so, I, I what's that? I may not be the sharpest tool in the shed. Glenn will know this. And I may not be the sharpest tool in the shed, but I'm in the shed, bro. <laughs> I, I mean, love it. So, so you're gonna you're gonna do a little performance, but I do want to finish up asking you some questions. Sure. Um, number one thing, and and I man, I know. Um, I've been in the law. I I mean, I watched The Secret and been in the Law of Attraction movement since it came out. Like for many, many years. Um, what are some of the things in your opinion that, um, what, what's the number one thing in your opinion? Don't say fear. Everybody says fear. You got to do better than that. What's the number one thing that's holding people back in life from having the money, the ha having it all, the freedom, just the freedom and and real true happiness in life. What's number one thing? Fear. No, Fear. you can't say just, just, All right. All right. Hey, that was a great interview with Kevin, wasn't it? <laughs> no, okay. So um the the number one thing, hands down, is your programming. It's your paradigm. It's come the on system that you have that you didn't ask for that got programmed into you from birth the limiting beliefs that you have about everything from money to sex to religion to politics to everything everything was programmed into us from the moment we were born into this world and once you realize that you are not truly living 
the life that you are here to live because you're basically living with the programming that you've been programmed with. Once you understand that you can change that programming and you make the decision to go change that programming, then you can, it's, it's almost like, I, I would say this, if you could wake up in the morning and you could completely erase your hard drive, all the things that you believe, what would you believe? Who would you be? Because we have the ability to do that. And once we get that understanding of that programming, of that paradigm, and we set the intention of creating the operating system that we want to produce the results in our life, and we pick what we want, we pick the beliefs that we want, we pick the life that we want, we pick the attitudes, all the things. We, we choose that, and we intentionally do that, and it takes repetition because your paradigm didn't get formed overnight. It's going to take time. And it's one of the big things about Bob Proctor that made the difference with me. It's the repetition of the information. It's over and over and over and over and over until you get that new programming inside of you. And once you do that, it changes the way you think, which in turn changes the way you feel, which changes the way you act, which changes the reaction you get back to you, which produces a whole new result. So unless you love the results that you're getting in your life, the thing that is contributing to that is the way you believe and the way you think and the way you feel and the way you act. And if you want something different, it's like that old saying, the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. You are not, and, and I, I, I like to take it a little bit farther, it's thinking the same way you always thought and expecting a different result. Einstein said it, you know, you can't solve your problems with the same thinking you had when you created that problem. Amen. And this is where a lot of people get so upset and get so uh, triggered. I didn't do that. It's not my fault. Yeah, we attract everything into our life and our thoughts are creative thoughts. Yeah. And what we are thinking is going to create a circumstance, a situation, a habit, a paradigm, a life. And until you change that, until you change that, those beliefs and and really get to the heart of who you are and what you're here to do, nothing's really going to change and it's not going to be permanent. You know, I, 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 I love everything you just said, man. I, I, you know, so many people are, I say it all the time, same thing. It's your programming. You're, you're running a bad program and you've got to do the writing the stuff down, write it down, write, you know, I had Brian Tracy on the show and, and, and he was like, write it down, write it down, write it down. And I'm like, I'm like, Brian, you know, <laughs> oh, uh, Kev Kevin's done. All right. That's the end of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna off my wall and show you what I have, what I look at every day. <laughs> I love it, dude. He's getting something off the wall. Y'all. <laughs> Oh God, he just broke something. Oh no, I didn't break anything. So this is so this is just another one of the things. That, Let me give oh, you full oh. screen. Hold on. Here we go. This is how important it is. You see that? I used to have this big poster of my my new album on the wall. This is how important this is. I turned that around, and this is what I have up on my wall. Wow. Love is the master key which unlocks truth. I'm moving towards soul alignment, and then I have different things reconnect to the truth every day. My inner circle mastermind, the thinking to results, which is the Bob Proctor program, uh, acting and writing. Uh, I am here to inspire, create, lead, teach others to create my company. It's called IRH Universal. Uh, passive income. Uh, let's see what else is on here. Uh, music and performance, my funny hunting songs, uh, new talent development. These are This is what I look at when I wake up in the morning. And that's what kind of helps set the tone for my day, because if we don't do that, yep, Ken, then yep. we get we get sucked into, oh, I'm going to play two hours worth of Candy Crush. Oh, I'm going to uh, watch Netflix for six hours. Now, that's not a bad thing when you're watching Glenn Morshower. Stuff. Right. But if you're not watching Glenn Morshower stuff, don't spend six hours on Netflix until my movie I comes out. And then you can watch my movie for six hours. And and you know what? Even Glenn would say, don't, don't, don't. If if you're not getting the results you want in life, stop doing the dumb stuff that's 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 causing you not to get it. Yeah. Look, I, I had a conversation this morning with somebody, and I said they said they they wanted to to bring uh, somebody to to our 
our event and I, and which is nine ninety seven, And, and I said, I said, um, and this person said, well, maybe the next time you have one. And I said, it's a month away. Go manifest 997 today. Like, make it happen. What are you talking about? Just, you got it. If you're intentional and you write it down right now, write it down. Today, I am manifesting X amount to do whatever. As long as it's good for you, other people involved in the universe and, and the world as a whole, there's a likely chance that if you write it down and really truly believe in it with all of your intention and, and heart, you're going to bring that into your life. I, 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 I see it happen in my life all the time. You see it happen in your life. So, and Glenn says poor programming produces low expectancy. And he said that, that the, in earlier that low, their expectancy is what holds them back which again is tied into that story that they're living, right? The story yes. that they're, they're telling themselves the programming. So I, I, I agree, man, this is, this is good stuff. I hope y'all are listening and taking notes. And seriously. Listen, and Ken, I, I can't, I can't, I can't say this enough and neither can you and neither can, can Glenn and neither could Bob. This is your life. This is your oh. life. What do you want? Bob would always say, you tell me what you want and I can show you how to get it. Yep. What do you want? Don't you want a better life? How do you think you're going to get it if you don't surround yourself with people that can guide you through this jungle of crap that's out here? Amen, man. It's so noisy, especially in the personal development and the mindset and the, the manifestation and the energetics and the human design. It's so noisy out here. There are so, and, and, and listen, don't get me off of my soapbox, but there are so many people that are going out they go watch a YouTube video and now they're an expert and they're telling people I'm the next best, greatest. Listen, by your fruits, they shall know you. Amen. I want to see, is this somebody that I would follow? Let me observe them. Let me see their results. Let me see. Let me listen to them. Let me feel their energy. Yes. And once you connect to that, don't let anything stop you from getting no. involved. If you go to, I promise anybody that's watching this, if you go to Ken in Glenn's two-day event, it will be the best money that you ever spent. <laughs> I can promise you that. This but, but listen, but listen, not, not if you go there. So, okay, all right, show me what you got there, big boys. Come on, I'm ready. To change my life. Come on. That is right. the wrong right. to take. Come on, man. And expectancy is like I can't. You should be pinging on every word that comes out of their mouth because they know what they're talking about. And if you want change in your life, if you want to surround yourself in the right frequency, the right energy, you there's nothing better that you could do with 997 than to go to that event. I, I and and you know we didn't even pay you to say that. You don't have to pay <laughs> me to speak the truth, bro. I know. I and, love and, it. And, dude. And here's and this is another thing I got from I'm so grateful for Wolfie. For, for I'm so grateful for myself. Let me just back. I'm so grateful for myself that I took the action that Natalie and I made the decision to go to Ramey's event. Yeah. I'm so grateful yeah. because I had to make that decision. But because I made that decision, things started to unfold. And yeah. one of those things was I got to meet Jeffrey and his wife. And he yeah. introduced me to Glenn. And then I get to go into Glenn's. So I, I love this. This is just one of the, I've got so many, and I don't, I'm not a big note taker. I'm a lot more now than I used to be. Yeah. But I've written so many nuggets down from Glenn's workshop, the acting workshop that I'm a part yeah. of. And one of them says is the truth does not need rehearsal. Amen. You do not have to rehearse the truth. Nope. If you rehearse the truth, who are you fooling? The truth is the truth is the truth is the truth. And it's going to come out. And God yeah. says, you know, when it comes time to speak, I will put the words into your mouth. And so, yes, no, you didn't pay. You didn't have to pay. But I'm speaking the truth. You go to this event. And you go with it with the expectation that you want to change, not going begrudgingly or getting pulled there. No, I was fifteen thousand dollars to go see Bob Proctor. I've never spent five hundred dollars on myself before. <laughs> I didn't even pay for my college, bro. I got a scholarship to go. Wow. I I I didn't even blink. I didn't know how I was going to get all of it. I think I had like eight thousand dollars in savings at the time. I did not hardly no money. I mean, for somebody of, of of my life, I should have I should have been a multimillionaire by then. 
And I used to beat myself up for it, but I went and it was the, I couldn't get, I couldn't get that money out of my hands fast enough. And I expected that my life was going to change. And so you go see these two guys and you expect your life's going to change. And I guarantee it will change. I, I, I've said it to many people. I want you here in a second to read out loud what Glenn just yeah. said. But <laughs> And for those who can't put together 997, Ken and Glenn have decided to offer what we were calling our compassion discount price of 996. <laughs> that was probably the one dollar that they were going to give to me for saying that. So I'm happily yeah. willing to I, give that dollar up. People. That's one of the things I love about Glenn is he just he man, he comes hey, up with them. Let me let me let me throw something in here right now. This is important because th- this is so important. And Bob used to say this. When you give stuff away, when you give it for free, nobody puts any value into it. None. Uh, and none. I don't know why? Because do you know when I first? Because Natalie and I decided to go through Bob's training, and we went and we went through nine months of of Proctor Gallagher training to be uh, to to become licensed, certified consultants for Bob's company to be able to facilitate his programs. It was a lot. Okay, yeah. it was a lot. And once we got that, we part of our investment, we got a certain number of those programs that we could in turn go and bring in clients that we could recoup that investment before we started to make a profit. So we were very grateful for that. I gave away a couple of those programs. And you know the change that happened in the people's lives that I gave it to? None. Zero. So much so that they don't even talk to me anymore because they're I don't know, I guess embarrassed. Embarrassed, yep. We went up. If you do not invest in something, and this is this was the big, big, big thing that happened for me. When you're always trying to to get a lower price, you are going to enter into a frequency where you attract people that do the same thing to you. Yep. When you go to the car dealership and you want them to give you a car, you should give me a car. You're making all this money. You don't realize how many families that 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 markup is feeding. When That's you start right. to look at money in those terms, yeah. you quit complaining about how much stuff costs and you're grateful that you have it. Yep. And if you don't have it, if it's something that you want, I promise you, you set that intention, you will manifest it. Yeah. You want something bad? How many times have you had a buddy that wanted to get a new truck or a new bass boat? They, they probably couldn't afford it. They want that new bass boat. And that's all they think about. They're looking at the bass boat picture and they're thinking yep. about the bass yep. boat. And then they start to do things behind their wife's back. So she don't know. And all of a sudden one day they got this new bass boat. How do I know this? Because I used to do this, Ken. If right. there was something I wanted, if I wanted to go to South Texas on a deer hunt, or if I wanted to go to wherever, to Maine to see some girl, yeah. and I didn't have the money, if, if I wanted it bad enough, I found a way to get it. So if you want the life that you say you want, you want it bad enough, you will find a way to get the funds to go. The, but you I know what it. happens, dude, is, is people, and, and, and I, I, I don't want to spend much more time on this topic, but, um, because we live it, we know, but you know, people, people, um, sell out. And what, what I mean by that is, is, is they may say, Oh God, yeah, I'd love to be a millionaire. I'd love to be a multimillionaire. I'd love to be a billionaire. I'd love to, I'd love to do these things the with my life. I'd love to find the love of my life. I'd love to, you know, but they, they, they settle, they sell out there. They think I'm not good enough. That's good for somebody like Kevin Blake Weldon. Listen to that guy sing. Holy crap. You know, I'm not good enough. Listen to Glenn Moore shower. He's a freaking famous actor. Of course he's got it all together. He gets everything he wants, you know, and, and they make up these excuses to stay low. They, they make up these excuses to, to squash their own dreams. And it's a bunch of crap. Stop living, flying under the radar. You're not doing the world a favor. Oh, can I get a radar. Radar. What? Oh, get me fired up, bro. You, <laughs> I know. You get I know. Sometimes bro, in his workshops, man, I get fired up, man. Look, look what, look what Glenn said. People seldom run out of the money they spend on self-destruction. Come on with it. There's another one of those, those quotes. Come on, man. Here's here's the truth in in Glenn. You guys already know this, but I'm going to say it. So y'all can hear it from another person. If you keep up with the money that you spend over the next 12 months, 
I promise you there will be 997. There will be 5,000. There'll be 6,500. There might even be 20,000. Natalie's 28 grand a year to work with one on one. They'll be they'll be that money that yep. you spent on stupid stuff that is yep. not going to improve your life in any way, shape or form. That in one year's time, you could be making 10 times what you're making right now, living a 10 times healthier body than you're living in right now, have a 10 times better relationship with your spouse or a new relationship that doesn't exist right now. If yeah. you would make that decision, Glenn says this, if you are willing to endure the pain, the pains of today, and it's probably a little bit differently, then your tomorrow will be easier. Yep. Glenn, right. If Glenn, if you're he here, says his, his, uh, one of my favorite, one of my favorite quotes, if you're willing Glenn, to, to be tough, your tomorrows will be easier. That's what it that's was. That's right. Yeah. Glenn probably one of my favorite quotes is, is I live my life in such a way. How, how's it? Hold on. I'm, I got to remember it. I live my life in such a way that, that tomorrow. Oh, Glenn, would you type it out, dude? It's I live my life in such a way that tomorrow I'll be proud of my yesterday or something like that. It's really, really powerful. But, you know, look, it's one of my favorite quotes and I can't even remember the dang thing right now. It's insane. Okay, but so anyway, here's one more truth. Whether you remember to speak the right words is not nearly as important as the energy around that thought. That's right. It's yep. that energy. Because how many times have you been in front of somebody where they tell you something and the energy that you feel is not jiving? Yeah. Yes. How, how many frauds are there out there teach, you know, doing, doing seminars and doing, doing these things. You just said it, man. Somebody watches a YouTube video or they, they, they did a little something, something at some point, And then they're, you know, they get up and, and it, it, they just lead the masses in the wrong direction. And, you know, I think that people need to learn how to trust that inner voice that's talking to them. There it is. I live today in such a way that tomorrow I'm proud of my yesterday. <clears throat> it's one of the most brilliant sayings ever. I live today in such a way that tomorrow I'm proud of my yesterday. I mean, these Thank are you. these are some of the things that that people could easily. Um, oh, that sounds great, and it just kind of goes in and goes out. Yeah, but th these are th you could take that sentence right there and you could put that up on your wall and you could look at that every day for the next 30 days. And that alone would change your life. Yeah. Here's another one. Glenn said in class, uh, I don't know if it was this week or last week. I think it was talking about his grandmother, but it was something to the effect of you never have to take back something that you don't say. You never have, to take, you never have to take something that, that you don't say. That's so true. I, I, that's that's freaking brilliant. I know. You never have to take back something that doesn't come out of your mouth. So, so listen, listen. I I do have a one o'clock appointment, and it's twelve twenty six. I love you, dude. I love your energy. I love everything about you. I know the audience has loved you, and now I want you to pick up that. Forget all about that macho. <laughs> I want you to, dude. Okay, there was a song that you played the other night about. Was it about gratitude or 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 something of that? Oh, no, it was humble and kind. It was that Tim McGraw song, "Humble and Kind." Dude, can you play that song? Sure, sure. I love. I, yeah, I love that song. My daughter Ashley asked me to to do this. Ashley is who was sitting right next yeah, to me. Yeah, Ashley. Yeah, she's my. She's my, so sweet. I love her. She's so nice. She Here, Glenn it. said it. You never have to take back what you don't say. Amen. You gotta, what you? What you in there? Hey, I, I said, hey, Kevin. Real quick, I'll touch on this. I've said this to several people that have invested in in coming to the event that Glenn and I are doing January sixth and seventh. And 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 I said, listen to me. I, I don't know how to put this. Um, except for this way, you see Glenn in the movies, you see Glenn on TV, you see Glenn on the Ken and Glenn show, you, you see him on zoom meetings, you see him on Streamyard and all these things. When you're, when you're in that man's presence, just for an hour or two, and you just hear him speak from a stage, it has such an energetic impact on you that you likely will never be the same. Can you imagine 
what people are going to experience spending two full days with not just Glenn, which is unbelievable in and of itself, but with me as well. And I, I've said there won't be a person that attends that if they walk in there with an open heart, they will not leave the same person. Absolutely the truth. They will not. It's not possible. It's going to be freaking unbelievable. And again, so, dude, and again, it's it's not the words that are going to come out of the mouth, which are going to be profound, but it's going to be the energy and the heart and the frequency it. in which they come from because that's something them. that you can't lie about that's something that, that it just resonates and you feel mm -hmm. it you know it but you've got like you said you've got to come in with an open heart and an open mind because if you come in with that pre-programmed crap that we all have you're yep. going to reject and block some of the very things that could literally change the whole trajectory of your life man all right so you're gonna what is this song that you're gonna play you're gonna play that one first right Yes. What is it called? It's a Tim McGraw song. It's, it's it's called Humble and Kind. And it was a song that really, really hit me in the heart. And I love the song, but it wasn't one that I was going to learn and go sing it until my daughter Ashley kept texting me, Dad, you need to learn Humble and Kind. Dad, have you learned Humble and Kind yet? Dad, you should go play it live on Facebook. Dad, please learn that song. And then it was finally, <laughs> Dad, please learn that song because that's how I see you. And mm. I literally boohooed for 30 minutes. And and it, wow. and it literally took me a while to to sit down and be able to get through it without tearing up. I can now because I've done it so many times, but I love the song. And Here I we try go, to man. Here we go. You know there's a light that shines by the front door. Don't forget the keys under the mat. Those childhood stars shine. Always stay humble and kind. Go to church cause your mama said to Visit grandpa every chance that you can It won't be wasted time Always stay humble and kind and Hold the door, say please and say thank you Don't steal and don't cheat and don't lie I know you've got mountains to climb But always stay humble and kind those dreams you're dreaming come to you when the work you've put in is realized let yourself feel the pride but always stay humble and kind don't expect a free ride from no one don't hold the grudge or a chip and here's why bitterness keeps you from flying always stay humble and kind Know the difference in sleeping with someone And sleeping with someone you love Cause I love you ain't no pickup line Always stay humble and kind and Hold the door, say please and say thank you Don't steal and don't cheat and don't lie I know you've got mountains to climb But always stay humble and kind those dreams you're dreaming come to you when the work you've put in is realized let yourself feel the pride but always stay humble and kind when it's hot eat a root beer popsicle shut off the ac and roll the windows down and let that summer sun shine always stay humble and kind don't take for granted the love this life gives you. When you get where you're going, don't forget to turn back around and help the next one in line. Always stay humble and kind. And hold the door, say please and say thank you. Now don't steal and don't cheat and don't lie. I know you've got mountains to climb, but always stay humble and kind. Those dreams you're dreaming come to you When the work you put in is realized Let yourself feel the pride but Always stay humble and kind Always stay humble and kind Always stay humble and kind Dude, come on with it. I hope everybody's at home or at work or wherever they're watching, giving you a round of applause. That's so beautiful. 
I have one more request, man. I want to know what your favorite song is that's your original. And I want you to do that one. All right. I'll do that. <laughs> what is it? Tell me about it. There's all a right. story, there's a story behind it. There's a story behind it. There's a story about all the songs I've written. Um and and really, Wolfie. You're so awesome, Wolfie. I, I will never be able to thank you enough, bro. Um, thank I you, Zena. And and thanks, Glenn, for hanging out with us too. Um, so it, it depends on what what mood I'm in, what frequency I'm on when you ask me that question, because there's there's two or three different songs that it could be. Um, I wrote a song about the moment I met Natalie. And because because it was such a big deal to me um, to to find the right person for me, the perfect person for me, um, and because I had put so much of my energy and my love and, and my my desire for that uh, into the moment we met, this song has a very, 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 very special place in my heart. And this is also the song that will um, be the culmination of the movie, The Wish List, the Christmas movie script that I've written that Glenn is so I'm so excited that I'm going to get to work with Glenn but this is the song that will that will be at the end of that movie and it's a song I wrote about the moment I met Natalie it's called Woman Why Won't You Look at Me and and this was the song that the moment that I met her I knew in my heart I was going to meet the love of my life I knew it and when when I was sitting in the lobby at the LAX Hilton um, after my performance, there was a bunch of people around and it was expected that I was going to get the guitar up saying I, I was I make eye contact with everybody because I was expecting to meet her. I was expecting that I was going to meet her at that event. And so I'm making eye contact with everybody because when you see it, yeah, I believe that you can feel that energy. <clears throat> so yep. I would look at people and I didn't feel that energy. And as I was looking around the room, I saw Natalie. And when I got to her, she immediately turned away and would not make eye contact with me. And it caught my attention. I mean, it, it literally was like a shock. What? And I did a double take and, and she wasn't looking at me. So I kept singing and then I could, out of the, my corner of my eye, I could see her turn back my way. <laughs> and so I didn't immediately go there. I scanned the room again. And when I got to her again, she saw me coming and she, again, she turned away. And I'm thinking, woman, why won't you look at me? <laughs> Literally, in as I'm singing the words to a different song, my mind is literally thinking, "Woman, why won't you look at me?" That's so awesome. And about that time, and it happened one more time that I did again and again. The third time she turned away, and the moment that she, that she turned away, the third time the person sitting in the chair next to her got up, and I made a beeline with my guitar, and I went and sat down right next to her. And the moment I sat down, one of our mutual friends had their phone and snapped a picture of the look on her face the moment that I sat down. Wow. And somebody else filmed me singing to her. Wow. And I had all that. So wow. this is a song that I wrote about meeting Natalie. Woman, That's why cool. won't you look at me? Yeah, and it's on my it's on my uh my new uh, release which by the way you can find on iTunes and Spotify and and we even filmed a music video which wow. we have not released because I'm going to use some of the, the scenes from that music video in one of the scenes in the movie. So wow. anyway, woman, why won't you look at me? Here we go. Woman, mm -hmm. why won't you look at me? There's so much more going on here than meets the eye. Look around this room, it's plain to see. Everyone here is seeing something magical. All eyes are on you and me. So, woman, why won't you look at me? Woman, why won't you look at me? So, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid to love again? So, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid to love again? Afraid of what you're gonna see? Are you afraid you won't see what you wanna see? Woman, why won't you look at me? 
Cause I know what's running through your mind There's a million reasons why this won't work So why even try? I don't know how long it's been Since you've let someone in And I just know, girl, I'm not that guy So woman, why won't you look at me? Woman, why won't you look at me? Woman, why won't you look at me? Well, I know what's running through your mind. There's a million reasons why this won't work. So why even try? I don't know how long it's been since you've let someone in. I just know, girl, I'm not that guy. So woman, why won't you look at me? 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 Look at me. Dude. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, it reminds me when my wife and I met, man. It does. That that there there was this moment. I know the moment you're talking about. It was and we've talked about it. Wow. Holy, 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 holy moly. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Blake Weldon. Dude, you are amazing this look tammy remember tammy that showed up and and right at the end of the night i do that's her right there this is what i missed yes Th this is what you missed wow well ken thank you so much uh, you Dude, know i wish i had a cowboy hat i need a cowboy hat just well, one, bro. Exactly like that one. one i need one just like that you know wow. um, it's it's it hasn't been easy Ken, it has not been easy. I mean, it's, I've been through the ringer, bro. And I'm just, um, I'm so grateful because I appreciate every moment like this. I took so much for granted, dude, so much for granted being in Nashville and having a record deal and being on the A-list and having limousines and buses and opening up for all the big stars and getting to hang out with them. And I just took so much for granted. I'm not, I don't take a single I, honestly, I, I can't honestly say I don't take a single breath for granted because I still probably do at times. But for the most part, I'm so grateful for every day. You know, my brother passed away in his sleep at 46 years old from a heart attack. And he lived most of his life with a broken heart because of the upbringing, the, not having the mom. And I'm so grateful for every day. And I'm so grateful for the talent that God's blessed me with. And I want to make sure that I'm a person of value. And that sometimes that means I got to shut up and listen. And I have learned how to do that. And I want to keep getting better at that because there's so many wonderful people in this world that, that we can still learn from. And, and, and mm -hmm. you're one and Glenn Morshauer is one. When I audited his actor's workshop, yeah. it didn't take me but about five minutes. I listen, the acting part is great, but it's, it's the energy and the love and the light that comes from that man that I knew I was home. Yeah. I mean, it was almost like being in one of Bob's inner circle meetings, hearing what Glenn was sharing. Yeah. And I'm not, Glenn knows I don't, I don't say things to kiss, but I might have years ago, but I'm so grateful that I was, that Jeff Wolf, that Wolfie introduced me to them and I, that I was accepted into that workshop because it has literally been a life changer for me and i'm so grateful and i'm grateful for you and, and and glenn thank you for bringing mr mr ken walls out the other night so i'm glad i got to meet him because ken i got a feeling that i'm gonna have the, yeah. the honor of doing more with you guys in the future and i look forward to amen that. amen forward. dude so glenn says this has been my favorite interview on ken's show and he's watched most of them um, and he said, there have been guests where I would have preferred having someone sandpaper my eyeballs. 
<laughs> well, I'm so glad that that wasn't me, but I hope that wasn't me. No, definitely was not you. Oh, my God. Oh, next man. time, I, I'm, I got to throw it out there. So, normally, <laughs> I don't wait to the last minute, but I had to take the girls to school this morning because we're getting, like, massive snow here right now. So I was late getting back from taking the girls and I was in a rush to get everything set up and I didn't have my fancy backdrop um, set up. So you guys are just getting, you're getting, you're not only you getting Ken walls, but you're getting my walls too. So. <laughs> oh my God. Jo There's so many comments on here, dude. Oh my gosh. So listen, um, man, I'm so grateful for you and I look forward forward to um us doing some great things together man this is this is just the beginning this is literally just the beginning um and just so you know most people that have been on this show end up becoming international superstars if they're not already well, bro i sure hope i don't break that chain man you ain't breaking no chain man you're gonna take it to a whole new level brother Hey, listen, I, I genuinely appreciate you and and um, look forward to more, man. Just look well, I forward to more. Thank you very much, Ken. Yeah. Thank you. It's a wonderful show, and I can't wait to turn more people on to you and what you're doing. Thank break you, through man. those walls, man. Break Come through, on. man. You got to oh. break through. All right, Glenn, go have some lunch. That, that, that reminds me. My stomach's been growling for 45 minutes. I know. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Wow. So, um, dude. Everybody watching, Jeff Wolf, thank you, brother. I appreciate you and love you, man. Jeff's yeah. part of my mastermind, and he's such a good dude. I, I oh, love that dude. I got to give you a howl there, Wolfie. I, lo I love that dude. So, um, listen, um, everybody follow this guy. Where can they follow you? KevinBlakeWeldon.com? Um, you know, I don't know that uh, – I don't even know that my website is still up. It, I've rebranded so many times. Um course they can find my music on youtube they can find yeah. it on spotify my, my spotify uh users exploded last month i had a hundred and like 40 or 150 percent increase in my spotify wow. and my and my royalty this week was was twice what it was last week so christmas From spotify Spotify, well, wow. not just spotify but amazon wow. music rap wow. a, yeah. a dj Doozer, Wowzer, Pizza, yeah, yeah, yeah. all those wow. different online platforms, like they got it. I, I checked the box that said, any way that there's a way to make money or even free, I want my music out there. So I checked all the boxes. Wow. So amazing, man. So amazing. Josh is is uh, giving you some massive props, okay. man. Josh is, like I said. Oh, like, God. Sean Frost in the house, man. Look at that. I know, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. Well, I've got to throw some kudos out. And I know this isn't the 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 man love hour, but man, I love me some Glenn Moore Shower. I love yeah. me some Sean Frost. I love me some Ken Balls. But I'm gonna say what Josh Mandrager, what an amazing, amazing talent this guy is. I've Dude. heard for 30 years I've been in this business. I've been on stage with a lot of incredibly talented people in yeah. studio on shows, and he is right up there at the very top with not just talent, but passion in his passion. delivery. When he delivers these songs, you're not getting somebody just stand up there singing your song. You're getting someone up there living the song in the moment. He is it's, amazing. It's unbelievable. Amazing. Like it is on a different level. It really I want is. That guy in my movie, Glenn. <laughs> and 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 both of y'all up there at the same time is just. It's incredible, man. It's yeah, incredible. Right. We're yeah. going to do more of those. We're going to do one in Lufkin next time I come home. We're going to plan one in my hometown. It's not so far they're driving. I don't expect you guys to make that long drive, but we're going we're to make it. We're going to do we're one making it. In Texas. Ain't that, ain't that long? I mean, yeah, it's all good. Listen, I appreciate you. I thank you for coming on, sharing your heart and your soul and your love with everybody. Everybody go follow this guy everywhere on all the socials. Go see if KevinBlakeWeldon.com is even up. I don't know if it is or not. but You can find on Facebook, Kevin Blake uh, Weldon, the music. Uh, that's right. Yeah, there's there's ways you can find me. And hear follow, the follow him everywhere. Follow him everywhere. So, Kevin, thank you. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to end the live stream. Thank you all for watching. And, wow, I don't know how I'm ever going to top this one, but we'll see, man. We'll see. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. you, man. See you guys later.